Okay, lecture two four, systematic linear graph modeling. A system graph is a representation of a physical system as a set of interconnected linear graph elements. The construction of a system graph requires a number of engineering decisions. In general, we can use the following procedure. So, step one, define the system boundary and analyze the physical system to determine the essential features that must be included in the model, especially inputs, outputs, energy domains, and key elements. Okay, mm -hmm. So this is the part that requires a lot of interpretation um, and is probably the most challenging aspect, even though it's hard to practice it in a class because um, Typically, the problems give you a pretty clear interpretation. Oh, this schema, it already kind of gives you a schematic instead of a real world problem. So, so it is a little bit challenging to, um, to get a feel for this part, and this is one of the hardest parts. So, I, I will try to give you guys some examples as we go and try to get you guys as familiar with doing this in the sort of real world as possible. Um, but you also have to learn like how to do the actual analysis process as well. So it's 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 a bit challenging, um, but we'll talk talk about it as much as we can. So two, form a schematic model of the physical system and assign schematic signs according to the sign convention of lecture two two. So there are uh, uh, there's the whole discussion of sign assignment versus the convention and what the use of a convention is. Most of it's pretty much, uh, you can't get into trouble, and, except for in a very few specific cases. If your source is in the wrong direction, then you're in trouble. Uh, if you're trying to use the convention and you don't properly use it, then you can get into trouble because you'll interpret something as being different than it is. But for the most part, the convention is just there to help you interpret the result. So when I get a sign, I get a negative sign on a number, knowing what that means, um, the convention is supposed to help with that, right? We had that discussion virtually on Wednesday. Uh, so then determine the necessary lumped parameter elements representing the system's energy sources, energy storage, and energy dissipation. Four, identify the across variables that define the linear graph nodes and draw a set of nodes. Five, determine appropriate nodes for each lumped element and include each element in the graph. Six, assign linear graph signs according to the sign convention of lecture 2.2. Two. So uh, you, you can, you can uh, use the convention um, uh, in the schematic and you can use it also in the linear graph as well. So the first three of these steps are the hardest. Considerable physical insight is required to construct an effective model. Often it's helpful, if not necessary, to have experimental results to guide the process. So how, how do you decide what the lumped parameters are? Sometimes you have to do some tests before you can really get a feel for it. OK, an example. We're going to do some examples, one in each energy domain. Um, so for the system shown, Develop a linear graph, a, a linear graph model. So here is a physical system. It is, say, some sort of uh, maybe a platform or a beam that's cantilevered out, has a mass on it, and it's got some force being applied to this mass. Okay, so it's you could imagine that maybe this is a, a a shelf with a motor on it, or maybe this is a, um, uh, I don't know. This, this could even be an, like an entire structure. So this, this could be like a mezzanine in a shop that's got like a piece of heavy machinery on it um, that maybe has some sp something spinning, gives some sort of cyclic loading, and we want to do some analysis on the system. Um, so here's some that's a sort of physical system. You could draw a schematic in, in terms of lumped parameters and this is uh, an important step 
to remember to do. And sometimes you'll be given problems already as a schematic, and uh, that's just to sort of expedite this, this process, but recognize that the schematic, uh, this is not what your system typically looks like, right? Like you're not gonna have like a mass sitting there on, a, on an actual spring, and that's what your system uh, schematic will look like. You're gonna have, you know, some physical system you gotta sort of distill down in, in steps to your sort of uh, uh, important elements. So, we'll model this as being a mass uh, suspended by a spring, okay? And with some force applied to the mass. And we need to draw a, uh, uh, a linear graph. So I already assigned signs, right? I assigned the positive velocity direction to be in the same direction as this forcing function. And remember from the, from the long discussion, that's our preferred way to do it. Uh, but that's not the, that's not the only way. We, they can be in the opposite direction. It's just not our preference. Okay? Um, so what do we do? What's the, what's the first thing we do? Because we've already got the schematic. So we've already got, let's see. This has already been done. Oh, I don't know why it always goes to white. Uh, okay, so uh, we already did one. Um, schematic is done, um, and the assign assignment. Determine the necessary lumped parameter elements representing the system's energy sources, storage, and dissipation. So we've got a mass and a spring, right? And we've got a force source. So we've done that. Then identify the across variables that define the linear graph nodes and draw a set of nodes. So in a me translational mechanical system, we have to identify the distinct velocity places, right? So the mass is definitely going to have a velocity. So that's a node. The, the uh, ground, that's another node. The ground's always a node. So those are two nodes. So let's draw the ground node in. And then let's draw the mass node in. Um, remember that the mass node always is going to connect to ground, right? The mass node always connects to ground because it has to have an inertial reference frame. So I will, I don't know, however you want to draw it. I often just draw the masses straight to ground. You can do the dashed line to remind us that this is a sort of virtual connection to ground. And we've got uh, a spring that connects between those, those two nodes. Is there anything else? Are there any other velocities? I think that's it, right? So for this system, there's only the one velocity besides the ground. And the spring has got to connect these as well, right? Um, it's supposed to be in the direction of the coordinate arrow, right? That was our sign convention. And that means that it goes from mass to ground, right? You go in the direction of the, of the coordinate arrow, it goes mass, ground. So that's going to be this direction. So that's our k. And we've got our, our source, um, our force source, which is applied to the mass. And we've got to decide if it's going to be, the direction of it is going to be in the direction to toward the node of application or away from the node of application. And remember that has to do, from our, from our sign uh, convention, has to do with uh, whether we have the direction of the coordinate arrow and the, the uh, force source direction in the same direction or not. If they're in the same direction, like they are now, then you draw the force source arrow toward the node of application. Right? So that's, that's the, the convention that we established. We've got our linear graph. 
So there's one of many, many linear graphs that we'll do. And soon linear graphs will be the easy part. Well, there will be a lot more work to do after the linear graph. But you, you get used to drawing them, and they'll be pretty easy, usually. OK, so for the system shown, develop a linear graph model. So we've got a physical system. This one, the schematic and the physical system are virtually the same. Um, for these rotational systems, a lot of times it, it kind of works like this, but not always. Uh, so you have a, a motor, which we're going to treat as a velocity source. It could be a torque source. It just depends on how the motor is set up. And we're, we're not going to model the motor itself in this problem. So uh, what we're going to say is it's some motor that has uh, uh, some sort of feedback mechanism on it that allows us to control its velocity. Okay. So we're going to treat it like a velocity source. And it's going to um, come into the system. These, are, I, these arrows on there are not meant to be sources. Uh, uh, well, so this omega s is supposed to be denoting this velocity source input. And then this, is, oh, this omega j is just a coordinate. Um, direction. So I, I did an assignment of the coordinate direction, which was for the whole shaft, I said to the, to the right. So right hand rule to the right, and um, that's the direction that's positive for rotation. So let's, uh, uh, let's take a look. We've got this source. It goes, transmits through, through the shaft uh, to, through a drag cup uh, to the flywheel. And then um, through these, and it's supported by these bearings here. So that's our system. I, it's not clear from this if there is a long shaft that needs to be uh, treated as being flexible, like a spring. Um, and so let's assume that, that there's no need to do that, that it's, that it's rigid enough. So let's see. We've got this spot. There's definitely a distinct angular velocity here, right? There's definitely a distinct, distinct angular velocity here, which is the same as the flywheel's angular velocity. And assuming the shaft is not flexible, um, uh, we're going to go from there all the way to the end, right? So those are the only distinct velocities. So you've got two nodes. Let's call them A and B. A and B. And then you've got always your ground, right? Your reference. So we've got, uh, uh, let's see. It's always nice. I always like to draw in the, the mass nodes first, or the inertia nodes, A-type energy storage element nodes, because they always go to ground, right? Well, not for electronic systems, but for mechanical systems. So for J, J's velocity is reference to ground. So there's our J. And then we've got our uh, uh, source that connects to A, right? And we put that source direction in the same direction as the coordinate arrow. And it's a, in a cross variable source. So which direction does it go? Toward the node of application or away? Away. Because it's a cross variable source, it goes away from the node of application. Good. Hey, y'all, can you, can you shut the door? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, OK. So then we've got, some, so somehow this velocity source omega s gets connected up to b right so it does that through this drag cup so this is our b2 and i drew the arrow already from a to b that is the direction of the coordinate arrow right so from a to b good and finally, B1 is the last, the last element. So B1 is the 
bearing damping, and it always connects, well, virtually always the bearing is going to connect to ground, right? Um, and it does here as well. So there's our linear graph. Okay. One more. I think we could do it pretty quickly because this one is pretty easy. So I just did a, an alternator circuit. So here's the, the alternator. We filter it, and then it goes into our instrument. And so I, I'm not going to go into the details of, of an alternator and all that, but we're just going to look at this, this uh, uh, physical system. This is the schematic. This is our, our nice little uh, uh, what do you call it? Circuit diagram, maybe? Yeah. And so let's draw a ground. We can draw a ground really big if we want. It doesn't have to be just one one spot. So let's say we've got clearly all of our nodes here. Um, so let's do our A and our B and our C. Um, so A, B, C. And then this is D. And this is all just kind of just follow the elements, right? So it's an across variable source. It drops this direction from plus to minus. Um, we have our L1 that connects up here. And this is arbitrary, right? L1, do that. Um, B to C is our L2. Um, these are each going to ground. The capacitors are C1, C2. Um, and then there's a resistor, the load resistor here too. R, L. Yeah. So linear graphs for circuits are pretty trivial, kind of by construction, because we're kind of making everything look like a circuit, right? Okay, that's all I got for today. See you guys Monday.